Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 764 for April 13th, 2023, and I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. Well, I've always said that I enjoy talking to Adam Angst of Tidbits so much that I'd listen to him talk about advances in toenail clipper technology, so I'd like to welcome back to the <laughs> I show. I have opinions there. I have opinions. No. <laughs> Of course Hello, you do. Allison. I don't believe that. It's like when Adam and I get together, it's instant improv. Whatever I say, he's already got the answer to it. <laughs> An answer to. There's probably multiple ones. That's true. That's true. But I'm more reliable than ChatGPT. Well, there, well, that's that's a, set your bar a little bit higher. Just 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 a little bit higher than that. Well, Adam wrote a, a really interesting article uh, at the beginning of February in uh, Tidbits, and it would have been really really good if I had read that article before I ran into some huge problems that I didn't realize were caused by what he's going to teach us about today. I, that's why I write it at specific times, because I know you're going to, but you got to read the article. I'm telling you. I, yeah, I, my I, attention I, it's, span. It's, it, they're timed properly. You exactly. Just to, if just I have just to read it. it. I did eventually <laughs> circle back to realizing this was the root cause, but I didn't even know it was the root cause until I was most of the way done reading your article. So it's, uh, it's really unfortunate. So everybody should subscribe to Tidbits. Sorry, not just subscribe, actually read what they write in Tidbits because it's amazing stuff. Immediately, because it will solve the problem you're going to have next week. Just yeah, guaranteed. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I got to put it on the schedule. All right. So um, maybe you want to set up what it is we're talking about here. Today. Oh, yeah. oh, let me give one quick, I'll give a quick setup. Has anybody here noticed that all of a sudden all of their cloud services moved into the location section of the left sidebar of their finder window? That's what we're going to talk about today, which I thought was just, oh, cool, they're more convenient now. But I had no idea what was going on <laughs> under the hood until I read Adam's article. Yeah, that, that's probably the most overt thing. I mean, they, they, they might have been good and like told you they were doing something, but let's face it, apps update and tell us they're doing something all the time. Um, and so, you know, it's a blah, 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 whatever, you know, you're busy, you're trying to get something done. It's thrown up this dialogue and yeah, fine, go away. Well, and, and we're trained, do your updates, always do the oh, yeah. updates, right? Because oh, that's yeah. how you stay secure. You better do your updates. So yeah. this one turned out to be interesting and who read it? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and depending on who you are and what you do, it, it could have happened like three or four times with different services. Um, so we're talking cloud storage here. That's the real thing. So Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, OneDrive, not iCloud Drive, interestingly. iCloud Drive is special, like so many other things from Apple. It um, also affected Keep It that I use from reinvented software. It's like an Evernote uh, replacement, and yep. it moved. So, <laughs> yep. So, so basically, these things have been around for a long time, yeah, these services. And what their great innovation was way back when, was they integrated with the Finder. And let, let, let's, let's focus on Dropbox because they were the first um, and kind of the most interesting to begin with. And so you got a Dropbox folder in your home folder, and it was just a normal folder with normal files in it. But anything you put in there automatically uploaded to the Dropbox cloud and then down to any other of your devices you, you had. Now, there's other collaboration features in too, but that's not relevant for this talk. So basically, you suddenly got this Finder folder that was automatically synced with all your other devices, which is pretty cool, right? I thought so. And I still yeah, think so, we, actually. We still think so. It was really neat. We all, we all loved it. Um, and then as I, we got Google Drive, and we got Box, and we got Microsoft OneDrive, and they all more or less worked in the same way. There were differences between them, and, and they actually, different ones changed over time. So um, some of them, for instance, used a, a, a product called MacFuse to oh. turn themselves into little, vol into like literally volumes. So it was oh, more like, okay. you know, so you, the data was all on your drive, but it looked like a disk. So when you have a disk showing up in the finder on the right. desktop, they were their own disk. So some of them did that for a while. It, it varied. The important thing is it was all that way and different for each one of them. So okay. what was true of Dropbox was not necessarily true of Google Drive, was not necessarily true of OneDrive. Um, there was also another interesting factor, which we'll get to in a minute, which was you could say that you wanted your Dropbox folder, Google Drive folder, whatever, to be stored on an external drive. Oh, so okay. That's so that if you didn't was, have enough internal storage, you could have offline have storage there. Okay. Precisely. Precisely. Makes sense. So this is, so this is all good. Um, 
However, um, Apple, in its infinite loop wisdom, um, decides I see what that. You did there. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Right on the spot too. Like I wasn't even planning that. <laughs> um, the Apple decides that they want to kind of create a unified approach to uh, online storage services within macOS, and so yeah, they come up with something not, called. I'm not against that. No, no, it no, was this is actually confusing not a bad how they thing. all were different, and some of them, like Google yeah. Drive, was sitting yep. at the top level, but I didn't want it there, and I tried to move it, and it would come back and put it in the sidebar, yep. but then it would disappear. It was yep. weird. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know that. So right. So to, to be clear, Apple is not doing this from like ill intent. Right. <laughs> um, and so it makes the goal is to make everything consistent, and so that they all work in the same way. Which Apple, I mean, this is really kind of one of Apple's things, right? You know, consistency. You know, when you want to do something, it should work the same way every time. And whether it's Dropbox or Google Drive, it shouldn't really be that different. This change so was Apple, also part of getting rid of kernel extensions, too, wasn't it? Yeah, precisely. So, so that's the other thing is is that all of these to to be able to really muck with a Finder in this way. Um, and to do all the file transfers in the background and whatnot, you had to have a kernel extension. And Apple announces, I'm not sure, two years ago maybe? At least, um, yeah. That kernel extensions are going away. Really, we mean it sometime. Now, Apple is pretty good about not making that happen too soon. They mm -hmm. understand that you know, like it's a big deal for a developer to completely re-architect uh, their software. Well, and they but also says, notify the users a lot. I mean, well, yeah, I, I got rid yeah. of my Drobos a couple of years ago, and I'm still getting the notice telling me the Drobos <laughs> software because I can't find it. It's a kernel <laughs> extension, but if it's on my Mac, I can't find it. Oh, we can talk more about clean installs sometime other time. If you'd read tidbits uh, oh. got this week, you'd know. Level I two clean. Install. I would love to talk to you about clean installs because I have opinions. <laughs> Always the best. So, so in any event, um, so Apple says, okay, we're going to ditch, you know, we're going to deprecate kernel extensions, and so, but we've come up with a, a better way for you all to deal with this. And it's frankly, it's probably easier for all of these companies too, because they're going to say, hey, look, there's now this thing called the File Provider API, and you basically you do your stuff talking to your service, no problem, and then you just call the File Provider API, and we do all the stuff on the Mac. And this makes it easier for the developers. Um, they don't have to maintain all this all this weird Mac code. Safer and and more reliable for users. No kernel extensions, and um, and Apple you know has a consistent a consistent user experience. This is this is not a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. However, there's some consequences, and that's where this article came from, which is these consequences because. They're a little. They're sort of subtle, so they're a little hard for the the cloud storage services to convey concisely. And what I kept running into, I mean, actually, it took me a long time to write this article because I, <laughs> I like, I was just, at first it was just sort of like stream of consciousness. Oh, this happens in Dropbox. Oh, look, Google Drive's different. Oh, look, you know, OneDrive still does this. And and then you, you know, thought maybe like, you should try to draw a cohesive story. <laughs> Yeah, right. And then I'm like, okay, I got to, you know, and I, I mean, I spent, and I spent three days doing this, you know, sort of like, okay, now I got to dive back in and re re rearrange everything once again. See, now, so, you know what your problem is? You seem to like to be concise and clear and factual <laughs> in your writing. Damn it. <laughs> so it's a lot easier um, if you just fling crap out there and just move along. <laughs> There's definitely something about monkeys and Shakespeare and flinging, but I'm yeah. not going to go there. <laughs> um, so, so in any event, so I, so I, you know, I started like pin, trying to pin down these these services and what they were doing, and and figure out where they were similar, where they were different, and that's where the article comes from. And indeed, I mean, as you as you called out at the top, um, one of the really key things that people notice first is that um, sidebar locations in Finder windows change. That you probably had them in some location before, but it was not locations, um, mm -hmm. almost certainly. And that's now just a, a checkbox in the Finder settings. Um, and so if you actually go to you know, Finder settings or Finder preferences and look in the sidebar pane, you'll see there's now a cloud storage checkbox. And click that, and they'll just show up there. Um, so that's, you know, that, that, that's sort of the simple, simple thing. But here's where part of this is where this is like my personal experience. It's better now, but when they were first doing this, and it's obviously it's you know been sporadic over time, they weren't very good at making the move from where they had stuff before to where it has to be now. Brief moment of let's talk about where it 
all data has to live now. There okay. is one location, which is your user folders, library folder in a folder called cloud storage. So tilde slash library slash cloud storage. And that is the one Canonical. location to rule them all. Yeah. Okay. That's um, good. That's good. Again, okay. good, good, good. So you know, like it, they're all in one spot. We now know if you need to do backups, restoring, things like that, you know that that's a place you can look for things, et cetera, et cetera. So, but that's different, right? Mm -hmm. And so the upgrade process for a number of them wasn't very smooth. Mm -hmm. They they tend to, because you had this, this folder, like you had your Dropbox folder, your Google Drive folder, whatever. And then they went and sort of installed all this new stuff. And maybe they moved, moved everything, but they didn't necessarily get rid of the old folder reliably. Ooh. Plus, you and then if you had sidebar um, aliases, basically sidebar items to things <laughs> in that folder. So, like I have the tidbits financials folder in Google Drive, which you know I had a sidebar item for. And when my folder got disconnected, in other words, my Google Drive folder they 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 moved all its contents, but they didn't get rid of the old one. Suddenly, my sidebar item was pointing at something that wasn't being synced because it wasn't actually pointing at the new location. Did you talk about the sidebar stuff in the article? Because I didn't yes. see that. Yes. And I, so I did. Look out for disconnected local folders. Well, this I read about problem. disconnected local folders, but I didn't realize that the sidebar was doing it. Oh, this has gotten real weird. Oh, yeah. I am going to have yeah. to go through what you... <laughs> what? <laughs> Yep. So okay. So, basically, so, so what you should see is tilde library cloud storage, and then for example, Dropbox. And if you look in Dropbox, that's all your stuff. Correct. Right. Correct. But if you see stuff the, anywhere that's else, deep the, that's deep in the hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. And if you deep anything in like your home folder, well, we'll talk about that because because now it's what was true in some of, in the earlier days of this migration isn't necessarily true for people who have migrated less more recently. Okay. So um, so. Oh, and let's say again, I'm not sure people, maybe everybody else paid better attention than I did, but I didn't realize I'd migrated. <laughs> no. I no. just pushed, sure, do the update. So I didn't know any migration had happened. And Dropbox hasn't completed it yet. <laughs> people, Some people are getting like, hey, you should upgrade your Dropbox on one Mac, but not on another. Oh, that's that's cool. So that's, it's actually that's... okay because the, you know, the Dropbox service is between them. But that's my point is it's it's confusing right now to what state you're in, um, mostly with Dropbox. The others have all pushed the migration harder. Um, so so that they're not, they're not really, they're not as, as concerning. But if it happened relatively recently and you didn't notice, and you say you don't use Google Drive a ton, but you do use it for certain things, you might not have noticed that your folders are disconnected. Oh, and yeah. And so you could, be work, you could be working the, and this is what happened to me. I was like, that was literally saving, you know, like I saved, you know, like, Payroll, payroll uh, PDFs and stuff like that in the Tidbits Financials folder, and then I came to my my desktop. I was doing it on my laptop. I came to my desktop. And I'm like, where are they? Why aren't they here? And and I re but I I'm like, so oh. used to that happening. <laughs> like between Steve and me, we say we do all like all our travel stuff is in Google Drive, and I'm really used to going. Okay, well, let me go figure out why Google Drive stopped syncing today. But I still wouldn't so have been able to diagnose it. So so yeah so it wasn't until and actually the same thing happened on Tanya's um, on Tanya's machine where where she ended up with these two folders, and so and then of course you've got to go back and think like how much work have I put into this system that might not yeah. have been synced anywhere because then you can't just throw out the disconnected folder right it might it might contain data that's not not anywhere oh else. My God. So yeah, so that's that's sort of the the big the big kind of warning 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 um, that you got to be careful of. Um, so. Um, but the reason why I said like it's not a quite as simple as just looking, like oh no one looks in library slash cloud storage slash Dropbox whatever, um, is because all the services now they wised up and they make a sim link in your home folder. So you do have a Dropbox folder and a Google Drive folder in your home folder. But if they're done right, they're sim links, not standalone folders, and you can tell that. Easily in um, in terminal, but not in the finder. It's not trivial to, to, to determine the finder what's a symlink and what's not. Okay. Uh, so again, the article has a little bit of you know terminal you know, terminal command to to look at to, to explain what's what um, because it's useful to to be able to to figure that out. I'm going to give you one so. uh, little tip while you're here uh, that I think you might enjoy in in the ease of explaining how to uh, open a folder in the finder. If mm -hmm. you have the path bar showing, 
Oh, yes. You can right click and, yep. uh, and open in terminal. So you can go right there without a bunch of shenanigans. But you you had extra shenanigans in there that you oh, said were actually. You do the open and turn. Oh, see, I always do the. Well, it's not quite the same thing though. Um, let's see if I hang on. Let me let me go to a a, a a deeper one. Oh yeah, so I I I I tend to do. I know what I'm doing here is more dragging. Um, the tip that my term tip is if you drag a folder from the finder into terminal, yeah, yeah, you'll get the real path to it, which is important when working with these things in the library cloud storage folder because it turns That's out they said. actually can have slightly funny names. Yeah, like, like it had your my my drive had my email address as part yep, of the precisely. name when Google I Google Drive it in. does that, and I believe Box does too, but Dropbox yeah. does not. So yeah, I wonder yeah. whether the right so click anyway. open in terminal. Oh, but yeah, but does or yeah, not. that right click open in terminal is just kind of a sweet I, little. I I didn't actually. I mean, I sort of like I was where you could right click and get on those folders, but I actually had never done the right click in terminal. So that's a good yeah. one. To uh, know. It was wow. a use a listener sent in, and I don't yeah. remember who it was. So, <laughs> so or they knew. Credit, they knew. But, yeah. Um, okay. So so you have instructions in there on on how to find out whether the folders yes. that you see in your home folder are sim links or whether they're duplicate folders, which sim I thought I didn't have, and I do. Right, sim, so awesome. sim links or duplicates or aliases. Um, an alias is not the same as a sim link, but it, that's why I say the finder is not really reliable. Because if you do get info on your like the Dropbox folder and your home folder, if it's a sim link, it'll say it's an alias in the finder. Yeah, which is different. I think that's a feature of Apple nowadays yeah. is to just sprinkle random names around the exact same thing, <laughs> I, I mean, like like a workflow and a and a uh, quick action. It, uh, it, there's like eleven names for it. <laughs> Yeah, precisely. So precisely. that's nice. Yeah, but but and they're all the... and they're all and they're all part of continuity. Just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> now that's continuity camera. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> continuity. It's all continuity. I don't know what continuity is, but I I know it when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay. so in any so event, you've got so instructions yeah, so on how to figure that out. I've got instructions figuring out how to figure that. Out. But so there's another corollary to this, like the folder might get disconnected. Um, which is some apps and you know things that you've made aliases to and whatnot. Um, if they're hard coded and this sim link thing doesn't work or you don't have it or whatever, they might break. Those paths might no longer resolve. Mm. So, for instance, BB Edit and Keyboard Maestro have options to store your your application support files and your macros and stuff like that in Dropbox. Okay, and so. At one point in all this mess, I had trouble because, um, like, BB Edit didn't know where any of its stuff was, and keyboard and keyboard Maestro was like, you know, where I like all my macros were gone. I was like, well, or you know, or they it wasn't if they were gone again. It was it was that they were, um, they weren't they weren't updating, because it was pointing at some local version. Okay. And I was like, ah. So it's just a just sort of a reminder that it can be more than just like a sidebar item. That gets confused by this. So those those disconnected local folders can actually have can can cause apps to misbehave as well. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I'm glad you're not going through all of the specific instructions, but it was yeah. pretty easy to follow to yeah, see. Yeah. And now, it, now that I'm looking, two of mine are are uh, sim links. Good. Yeah. yeah. But my drive is not. Yeah. <laughs> and that's bad. And, yeah, and it also explains a, a symptom that I saw that I thought I'd fixed and I couldn't figure out why I didn't fix it was the sidebar item. One of my sidebar items says uh, mammoth 2023 parentheses one. I'm like, why does it have parentheses one? Let what? me go fix that. Uh, it's back. Yeah. So I didn't really fix it because I went and fixed it over in my drive, but it's not really <laughs> fixed here in whatever this sidebar <laughs> thing is, which is. Uh, and I've also been running out of disk space. Hmm. Mm, Might have both. A perfect segue mm. because so this was one of the big things. So when I started researching this, like it sounds like you and I use use these services relatively similarly, like relatively small files, you know, a fair number of them, but not millions. Those, I mean, we're yeah. we're, we're, we're kind of normal users. There are people who are not normal users. Um, again, <clears throat> we were talking earlier. Um, people who are not like me, um, and <laughs> which is fine, which is fine, not, not criticizing, but you know, like there are people who do video work who have terabytes in Dropbox. Now, I personally think this is kind of crazy because I frankly wouldn't trust Dropbox with terabyte size files and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But hey, you know, if it works for them, it works for them. I'm not going to criticize. Um, and so there is a, um, a, a an incredibly long thread. It's like, I don't know, 50 screens of comments about, about, about this problem, which is that you cannot have 
your Dropbox folder on an external drive anymore. It has to live in tilde slash library slash cloud storage, which so is on because your internal of the drive. API. Apple because mandated because of the that. API. Yep, okay, Apple mandated that. So this is a big problem for all the Dropbox people. And I was like hundreds and hundreds of comments. And and when people are saying like. I pay Dropbox thousands of dollars a month Holy cow. because they have ma- multiple terabytes of data with a you know, Dropbox business account. They've got bunches of users. You know, They've got 20 users who are all working on this stuff, et cetera, et cetera. They consider this, this is like mission critical core of their business. And so you can imagine how, how happy they are with the, oh, it has to all live on in your internal drive. And they, I'm sure they blame Dropbox. They're they're very unhappy with Dropbox. I mean, it's, right. it's not entirely Dropbox's fault, obviously, but right. but yeah, Dropbox has not solved this for them. And then, mm. and to be fair, they're Dropbox's customer in this particular case. So right. Um, so, however, um, of of the four, the big four, um, Microsoft solved it. Oh, really? So, yep, with OneDrive, and this is only OneDrive. Microsoft figured out how to separate. They called it their sync route. Which is has to be in library class slash cloud storage from their cache, and their cache you can now push off to an external drive, and the cache is where all the data lives of uh, offline files, so files you've downloaded. We'll have oh. to talk a minute about the offline versus online files in a minute too. But so so that's so Dropbox to their credit at some point says we get that this hurts. We are we are working on it, and we are stopping upgrades for everyone who has their Dropbox folder pointed to an and external volume. That's good. So, I, yeah, yeah, I have a question here. What happens to that? <laughs> yes, cache yes, thing? yes. In the back, Allison. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I always sit in the front row. You know, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's true. So do I. That's why. That's why we. That's why we. That, that's how we met in person. Was sitting <laughs> yeah, side right. by side, <laughs> teacher. Um, so, what happens if you run an app like uh, Clean My Mac and it has that thing that says uh, "Recover twenty two gigabytes of space if you purge these caches"? Don't know. Good question. That would be sad. Um, so I would su- I would suspect that it would that one they, they would know that OneDrive's cache is is is, is separate, s- different um, cache. Like, is different. Yeah. I mean, I okay. suspect that Clean My Max, uh, you know, cache caches stuff that's like really well known Apple slash Unix caches that are okay. that are because just if nothing else. In the kind of like, if you're going to build a utility like that, and the MacPaw people are not dumb, um, mm-hmm. you only work on data that you know is safe to delete. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, cache data is 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 usually for just for performance reasons. So so you would you would only you would only touch that. So I think that's safe. Yeah, it's um, good to start with MacPaw. Not stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. Not stupid. Really Very nice people. people. Very nice doing, people. Very nice people um, holding on like crazy in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, like, I think that should be know. in every ad for them. Also, <sighs> they're in Ukraine. You know? Yeah, right. I mean, they're oh. the people who sent an apology because they were going to be a little late getting back to people because their country <laughs> got invaded. Yeah, right. So sorry. So sorry. Customer service is a little delayed because of missiles. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I mean, yeah. Eesh. Yeah. No. Eesh. Uh, super nice people. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I hung out with them at a, at a conference um, shortly before the pandemic. So mm. I was like, they were kind of foremost in my mind when all this nonsense yeah. happened. So, yeah. okay. So let's keep talking about external drive stuff. There's a couple other workarounds, which give me the, well, there's one workaround for Dropbox, which I have not tried, um, but I think is a cool idea. There's an open source Dropbox client called Maestral. M a a e s t r a l Maestro. I've heard about that. I, I have not used it yet, and part of the reason is is because I need to install it like on a an older like it's it's best if it's used like when you don't want Dropbox installed for real, and okay. because Dropbox has the the three device limit. Yeah. Um. For for free accounts, mm-hmm. um, I need to like spin up another Mac and install Maestro on it so I can see how it works in that scenario. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Mm-hmm. But Maestro does not, it uses the public Dropbox API. So it's 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 like pretty much guaranteed to survive. You know, Dropbox isn't going to kill that API um, willy-nilly because they're not Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, but it does, the one thing it doesn't do that um, Dropbox does, it doesn't do what's called binary diffs. So with Dropbox, let's say you have a, a, a you know a fifty megabyte file and you change one word, mm-hmm. Dropbox is smart enough to just upload that one word. Okay, and and then download that one word to everyone else. So it's very efficient in its transmission. 
the Dropbox API does not allow that, the public one. Okay. So Maestro says, oh, that 50 megabyte file has, has changed. I don't care if it's one word. I'm uploading 50 megabytes up and 50 megabytes down to everyone else. So if you edit a part of a, a 200 gigabyte video file, you're yeah, uploading and downloading problem. 200 gigabytes again. So that's for, the problem. So sort of just the people who need this. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's not really going to work for the, the big video folks. So, but, so by this, the way, I this ScreenFlow, the video editor I use for doing screencasting, very specifically throws up a warning saying, do not save your files on Dropbox because it's unreliable, <laughs> yeah. because it's unreliable yeah. not because of this. Yeah. So, so the so problem is, is that apps do not like having their data moved around underneath them. Mm -hmm. And that can happen. So what if someone's yeah. opened the same file somewhere else? Yeah. You know, that like bad stuff can happen. Mm -hmm. So there is actually a solution. I, and I did a second article about this because I didn't know about it when I wrote this first one. Um, for the video people who really do have terabytes of video and, you know, a 20 person work group who need, you know, constant access to all this, there's a service called LucidLink. Hmm. And um, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive in the category of people who are spending thousands of dollars a month on Dropbox. Um, and it's, I, would, I would say that it's like twice as expensive as Dropbox for, or, so, or the like for, for, for your normal user. Um, but, uh, but anyway, what LucidLink does, which is mind-bogglingly clever, um, is they go back to the MacFuse idea. So they actually mount what looks like a drive on your desktop. But unlike all the old cloud storage services in the past, LucidLink's backing store, where the data really is, is a cloud-native file system. Okay, so it Dropbox is and so Google Drive are not that? No, no, no. You're always working on local data. You are oh, never right, working right. on anything in the cloud. This is a cloud-native file system. So, so you need a lot of bandwidth? Are, uh, you do need a fair amount of bandwidth, but, um, they, and I, I immediately, I, I hit exactly the same thing. It's like, ah, oh, you got to have fiber or whatnot. Like, you know, fiber would be good. No question. But, but they say basically, um, for a couple of reasons, one, they have very significant caching. Um, so they do cache a lot of data locally. Okay. Um, and, um, and also they, uh, um, they're a normal disc would be a normal like SSD or hard drive would read read data in 4K chunks. Um, that's what the block size is. And whereas they make 256 kilobyte chunks. Oh. So they're bringing in, you know, somewhat larger butts. But basically, apparently, and I'm I'm taking this on on faith and, you know, you know, customers saying it works. Um, video apps are kind of happy to stream to bring in data like this. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, they're really not perturbed by it at all. Yeah, Word and doesn't so, like it so much. <laughs> Yeah, but, Maybe. but you're never going to have a file that you probably couldn't right. deal with like that. So, I mean, in some sense, every, like every, because remember, think about it, this is just a file system. So Word says, you, you, you double click a document, Finder says, open this in Word, and Word's like, waiting for, my, waiting for this file. That file, think about it wasn't, when it was on floppy. It was slower than it when it was coming from SSD. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Word still has to wait until it's it's gotten what it needs. Right. So this is just it's, it could be a slight delay longer, but you know, if you have a hundred yeah. megabits down, you know that's that's eth you know that would that used to be Ethernet, right? <laughs> right, right, right. So so in any event, so so LucidLink is very cool, and anyone who's doing significant video or you know has like terabytes of data should absolutely look at it. I, so that's I, as I, an I alternative to Dropbox, not as it an doesn't alternative work with to yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they actually right, have right. like, you know, comparison between Dropbox and LucidLink and Google Drive and LucidLink. And, <laughs> okay. Um, so, but uh, as I said, they, they seem like they're, I mean, I'm fascinated by what they're doing because it's technically brilliant um, in terms okay. of um, having the internet be your, your backing store. I mean, like instead of a hard drive or an SSD. So underneath right. the file system. So, let's, okay. Let's dig but, into the part about uh, the, what's stored locally and in the cloud. Because that, yeah, that's where things that's, get real dicey for normal people. That's so okay. So again, this is not new, um, but it is Apple made it consistent. So there's a problem with these with these cloud storage services, which is you have a 256 gigabyte uh, drive on your uh, on your MacBook Air or something mm -hmm. like that, and you've got a two terabyte Dropbox account. There's no way you can fit all this stuff on on your Mac, and this has been mm -hmm. true for years. Again, nothing right. new here. Well, that's part of why um, those things are so useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because I mean, Dropbox had the idea of selective sync, uh, for instance. You could, it's you could why set I used it instead of iCloud. Yeah, 
Precisely. Right. Um, and they all had something along those lines. So you could either say, I need this stuff to be local at all times so that I can use it on an airplane, so it's fast to open, et cetera, et cetera. And this other stuff, yeah, I can wait. Mm-hmm. I can wait for it to come in. It's not going to be a problem. Um, and so what Apple said is, okay, fine. Um, we, we understand that this is important. Um, and so Apple has the concept. The terminology differs a little bit because they all tweak it around, but um, you'll see offline used or pinned sometimes um, to indicate files that live on your drive. They have been downloaded. Right. Versus online only. And online only files, as the name suggests, are just like they're, they're icons, they're placeholders. Um, and when you double click them or open them in any other way, they have to download before they can be opened. But you're in control of what's in that yes, versus in not control. in that as opposed to iCloud where it's going, don't worry your pretty little head about it. I'm going to move these files that <laughs> we, you don't we, need. We got this. We got this. It's <laughs> Even okay. if you have a massive drive. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. Precisely. So, you, well, at least in theory, I haven't, I haven't done exhaustive testing on this, but yes, you can, you can specify at a folder level, whether something's online, online only or offline. And of course, anytime you open something, it automatically becomes offline. Mm-hmm. Um, so the important thing about this is um, that online only files don't really exist. Hmm. Right? You think about it. Don't Consider think of online? Anyone, think of it uh, on your drive. On your drive, they don't. Oh, okay. Right. So right. so think so think about it. Think about them like an alias. Think think of them as an alias to this this you know cloud, cloud storage. Right. Right. Cloud storage. So you click you know file name dot pdf. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and it's going to download and open. But mm-hmm. could you search the contents of file name.pdf oh. before you download no, it? No, no, no. Uh-uh. Okay. There's no contents. It's okay. got nothing. To, it, Spotlight can't do a thing. There's nothing to search. Right. Similarly, can you back up the contents of file name.pdf? <laughs> no, 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 because there's nothing to do. There's no you're, content. You're backing there. up an, an alias, basically. At best, you're back at an alias. <laughs> um, and, and then I say that at best because, in fact, this is one of the places where the different services vary. So, for instance, with Google Drive, um, I have to verify this. Um, um, with, uh, let's see, with Google Drive, right, with, with Dropbox, you'll see folders that contain online only files, but there'll be nothing in them. With okay. Google Drive, you won't even see those folders if there's nothing in them. And that when you like, you go to a uh, restore from from a backup app because oh. again, it's like there's nothing there. Right. There's no there right. there. It's right. like I'm not going to say it's like Oakland, um, but uh, <laughs> um, the you know so so basically these these things are really amorphous. And what that means is, or what I recommend to everybody is, let's say you've done this migration. I, I, I can't predict what's going to have happened, but I believe that what it will try to do is have everything be online only in most cases. Online only. Online only, because that's the truth, right? Truth is in the cloud. And so the, the, the local version is just a copy. And so when you do the first do the migration, easiest thing for them to do is just say truth's in the cloud, you know, all this local stuff, whatever. That seems um, not- like a... a, a- poor way to do it if you have specifically <laughs> said, I would like this folder to be offline. Well, so again, this is at the migration level, when, you, when you've first done your migration. Okay. Not knowing so you've done your migration, not, by the way. Yeah, right, right. So we don't know if you have or not. And, like that, but mm-hmm. just, and I, I don't know that this is the case, but when looking at mine, man, there's a lot of stuff offline, which I don't think it should ever have been offline. Okay. So, right. so what, I'm, what I'm recommending is, is that if you are interested in searching <laughs> or backups um, on or these working files, on a plane, working on a pl- well, working on a plane is different from from what I'm going to get to for just a second. Okay. Which is that for searching and backups, immediately go in and make everything offline. If you control yeah. click, you know, select all the folders, control click, and there's a there's some kind of a command in there. It varies mm-hmm. a little bit by by service, and I've got some of the examples in the article, whatever. But it's it's pretty obvious. It's like download now or make offline or something like that. Um, is, again, like Dropbox and Google Drive are quite different that way. Um, but they've all got something along those lines. If you make everything offline, that has download every piece of data I have in Dropbox and Google Drive, whatever. If you have enough disk space. 
<laughs> if you have enough space, again, mm-hmm. assuming that that's possible. And if you don't, you can probably do it folder by folder to make sure right. you, you know you have enough for and go back and forth. Um, and then let it sit until it backs up, and Spotlight indexes it, right? Because right. once it's that's done, it should be in the index. And even if you then later go back and say, "I need this disk space back," and you evict them um, by saying um, "remove download" or "make online only," or whatever the command is, um, they'll be in your backups at that moment. Um, they should be in Spotlight uh, for searching. Spotlight's a little iffy on the searching, but uh, um, um, and so you you basically will have all those capabilities back. Now, right. as you said with planes, yeah, you got to make it offline before you leave. Right, right. Just, there's no can, two ways. Can about I tell it. you the weird way I found this? So I said, had I read your article? And by the way, I said <laughs> at the beginning that it was in February, but that was when you you had a title of an article: "Cloud Storage Forecast Unsettled with Possible Storms." That with- was actually February of last year. Oh gosh, it was. Well, I'm really yeah, not paying attention. This has been going attention. on for a while, right? No, this one was early March. So um, yeah, the so, article we're talking about was March 10th. Um, I sort of thought it was all going to be cleared up by now. So yeah, <laughs> clearly yeah, not exactly. Um, but you are a good weather forecaster. So <laughs> the the way I discovered this was really obscure. I run a WordPress site for Podfee.com, and I run a plugin called Updraft Plus, and up up Updraft Plus takes a snapshot of my my website and it uploads it to uh, Dropbox. Well, I don't need a million of these. So I have uh, Paul Kim's wonderful Hazel, look at that folder and delete everything that's older than a month. So I only need like the last month's Good. worth. And so yeah. it cleans it up, cleans it up, cleans it up. And then one day I'm looking, I'm going, why is all that? There's, it's full. I mean, there's like 40 of these folders in there. And so I go in and I look at the uh, at the errors that's co- that are coming from Hazel, and it says resource deadlock avoided. Excuse me? <laughs> so luckily, Paul is like an incredibly uh, responsive, wonderful developer. And he said, I don't know what that is, but I've been getting a lot of reports about it from people who use OneDrive. I'm going to need you to contact Dropbox. So I wrote to Dropbox and they kind of started in the middle of the story, but eventually took me back to, oh, we wrote a blog post about what was happening and here's why. And it's <laughs> Don't exact- you read our blog? Well, <laughs> I gave him a hard time about that going, yes, I, it's the first thing I read every morning is the Dropbox <laughs> blog. Um, but uh, the, the bottom line was the files weren't local. So Hazel couldn't delete them because they didn't exist here. Right. But right. it wasn't, Another I sent that, that information yeah. back to Paul and I'm going to send him a link to this article that goes into more depth. Cause I said, if you get any comments from people from Dropbox, just send them right to this blog post. Cause it says very clearly, you might not be able to do stuff with these files cause they don't actually exist. And they, <laughs> and they said, go to the top level Dropbox folder, right click and say, make offline. And that brought everything in. And and but here's an interesting question for you, which is if you're still doing this, mm-hmm. new ones come in. Do they come in as online only? If I create a new folder, you mean, or a new well, it's, file it's, it's, in a folder? Making, the backups are happening automatically, aren't they? From Updraft Plus. Oh yes. Um, let's see. So, Dropbox apps. Because I'm Plus. betting those are online only when they come in. Mm-mm. As of two days ago, it's online. Uh, offline. Yeah. No, no, oh, no. Sorry, okay. it's offline. I, I have dark offline. green check marks next to everything. Okay. So okay. they they said so, that would work. That okay. once you declare so, the folder level. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. So that's the good. So you did it at the folder level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's that's my 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 concern here is is that it's not quite clear to me what will happen going forward. And again, that's Dropbox. Who knows what Box and Google Drive and OneDrive do. Uh, mm-hmm. for their default action for new stuff. So hopefully it all works, yeah. but we don't actually know that. <laughs> let's count on it. <laughs> yeah, let's count. It always works. Um, so so there's there's another thing, which is, it's not actually related to to the offline online thing, but I do want to mention, um, um, which is some of, the, okay, this is, this was weird before too. So remember some of these, some of these services sort of set themselves up as drives and others as folders. Oh, right. And that could be a volumes. little weird for volumes and yeah, right. Volumes and folders. And so you could run into some weirdnesses in two places. One was moving files, right? Because if you move a file between volumes, it copies. If you move a file oh, between right. folders, it moves. Oh, but that behavior is different now. But it always moves now. That makes sense. Because because they're on library slash cloud storage, right? Makes yeah. total sense. Mm-hmm. But that's different enough that they warn you about some of them warn you about it. 
And okay. so, so there could be so like some of these, some of the, some of the dialects that they're not confusing, but if you don't know why you're being told this, you're like, uh, okay, fine. It moves. Right. Copies. I don't but know, if you were you know. used to, I could move it from my one drive over to this folder I share with Adam and it's going to be a copy. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's leaving it's and move. I don't think of right. that. that is, that's a yeah. good warning, but you're right. It would be, why are you telling me this? Right, precisely. So, so, so that's important fact number one that's related to this. Important fact number two is, let's say you move something from your Dropbox or Google Drive hierarchy over to your desktop. Perfectly reasonable move, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens to the file on Dropbox? Well, it's gone, isn't it? Precisely. Right. So it mo on your Mac, it moves from really library class slash cloud storage slash Dropbox mm -hmm. onto your desktop. No problem. You've still got the file. But in the Dropbox view of the universe, that file has just been deleted and is now in the oh. Dropbox, what do I forget what they call it? 30-day deleted, day deleted 30 something. Yeah, right. Precisely. Trash. They all have different, slightly different names for right. it. Um, and that is true of all of them in some form or fashion. Because again, once a file has been taken out of their control, from their perspective, it's deleted. And they're Makes not going to just just remove it. They put it in the usually the thirty day protected um, thing, so that's good. Um, but uh, but it's something you got to be aware of because I mean it, it makes sense, but you still have to think about it, right? You know, because the file is deleted from Dropbox's perspective, but it's still sitting on your desktop for you. <laughs> Didn't you say uh, one of them doesn't put it in a thirty day delete folder though? No. no they all do. There's, okay. there's, there's, there's another where I was stumbling a little bit. There's another oddity here. Is <laughs> okay. <sighs> the things you, the, the things I do why. for you, <laughs> the things I do for you. Okay, you have an online only file, mm -hmm. and it's in Dropbox, and you select it and hit Command Delete in the Finder. Mm -hmm. What happens to it? So I would have guessed it would go into the Finder trash. And you would be wrong. Ooh, um, okay. If it was from Google Drive, you would be right. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, right. See, that's the problem. So, um, so basically, um, an offline file is a real file, right? Mm -hmm. That's no problem. And so, offline files, yes. If you delete one, Dropbox, um, it will get deleted on the Dropbox cloud and go into their you know recently deleted folder, and it will go into the Mac OS trash. Oh, it'll go into both. Okay, it'll if go it's into offline both because right because it's offline because it exists as a real file on your mm -hmm. hard drive and it exists in, in the cloud okay. too. But if it's an online only file, and Google Drive does the same thing. And 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 one thing we I haven't mentioned, you can actually tell when anything is online only because there's one of those gray little cloud icons next to it, right, in the Finder. Right. Um, and so that's just, if it's if it has the one cloud icons next to it and the and the file name or in the you know in the Finder listing, um, it's off. It's online only. And so and with Google Drive, you move it into the into the trash and it shows up in the trash with its little cloud icon still. But Dropbox. For reasons I do not know, and, and, and probably will never be known to to humankind, um, it just disappears the placeholder. <laughs> so that online only icon just goes away. It never ends up in the Mac OS trash. Oh, right. oh, yeah, that, that's I mean, nice. I, I mean, again. It's not the end of the world. It's, we're not talking, you know, we're not talking, you know, like, you know, panic in the streets or anything, <laughs> but you might want to know. And, and, the, and then and to, be, to be absolutely fair, all of them warn you about this stuff. But again, mm -hmm. it's those dialogues that like you don't quite understand what they're saying at that moment because you're working on something else, right? Like you're not thinking, I need to understand my cloud storage service right now. You're thinking, I need to get the PDF done so I can hand it in by two o'clock, you know? Right, 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 right. So um, would would the bottom line be pay attention? I think that for a while well, till I would you say, get it's, what it's, your it's, service is doing? Yeah, pay attention, but I would perhaps not even that much. More just like file this away as a, as something to niggle at you if something ever is weird. <laughs> okay. Like if I had read this beforehand or had this conversation, right, right. I would have gone, hey, remember that thing Adam talked about? I wonder if that's right. involved here. Precisely. I like I really don't expect people to to, to remember this whole article. Right. It's way too finicky and detailed and stuff like that. It, you shouldn't have to. No one should have to. But I it's good to read through the finicky details, I think, right. to Fair, say, okay, right, because, something. there's this many weirdnesses. 
look for, pay attention to weird. Right, precisely. Hmm. And I, I believe I believe strongly in the the like trigger neuron concept, which is I don't have to remember something. I just have to like, ooh, there's something. Let yeah. me go check. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like a neuron fired, but I don't know why it fired. But let me go deal with it. It's it's when I'm the neurons sure, don't okay. fire that you're just like, well, how should I have known? You know, <laughs> no yeah. one told me. <laughs> now Adam told you. Uh, yeah, precisely. So would one last question? When we talked about sim links, can we delete those with impunity? Yes. So I, I've got sim links to a couple of them at my top yes. level, Allison, and yes. I don't want them there. I never wanted yes. them there, and now I can get rid of them. Yes, but and, not and the do, one that's a real and, folder. And, right, and do it in the Finder. Um, yeah. Okay. And I say that because you don't you don't want to accidentally do an RM in terminal that traverses it. <laughs> right. Because it's it's it's, it's one of those RM commands that like ha, since the since the since the early days of Unix has has been like yeah don't do this <laughs> because <laughs> you could you could erase your entire drive you know RM desktop you know just not that star, anybody has R. ever done that. <laughs> yeah, Bart right, tells a great site. story about having done that, and he, and he and he tells it to new people to say, "You're never going to do anything as dumb as what I did." <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. So yeah, so I would, I but yeah, if you just drag those to the fine, you know, and um, and then again, also like if you keep using it, if it were something like like say it were a real folder, and you dragged it to the finder, uh, the, the trash, and then you tried to use it, the finder would yell at you, okay, because you'd be trying to open something from the trash, and it won't do that, right, right, um, right, right. So okay. so that's that's a nice. I mean, so like. I mean, one thing I, I, I mean, I know there's people out there who like drag something to the trash and immediately uh, empty, um, but uh, I really don't recommend that. You trash like letting there it for simmer for a little while? <laughs> let it simmer. You I mean you like? I let you Hazel just, delete like, it after a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just like unless you're low on disk space, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'll get to you sometime. I just so. every once in a while go, whoa, eight gigabytes. I better. I could probably get rid of that now. <laughs> All unnecessary. Well, this has been yes. fantastic, Adam. I uh, I definitely would like to uh, to plan some more talks. We're gonna we're definitely gonna clean talk installs. about clean installs. <laughs> oh man, I I I can't compete on this topic because you knew so much more. But I'm I'm I might be able to hold my own chat and clean installs. Clean I'll send installs, you my please. latest articles. <laughs> <laughs> I read. I read your articles. Do you? Oh, so look at I, you! I, I, yeah, I, I, I signed up from them on my uh, the RSS. I have an RSS to email uh, service that uh, that sends me stuff. If they so. look like something fun. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. So, cool if people want to follow you online, other than going to tidbits.com, is there a uh, let's see a Mastodon link? That there is a Mastodon link. Which let me think. Let me think. Uh, at Adam Angst at um, Mastodon social. Cool. One of the standards. Um, so I haven't, I haven't quite, it. yeah, I haven't quite figured out how to like relate a Mastodon handle efficiently yet. So, yeah. but I'm actually, I'm actually Adam Angst basically everywhere. Okay. There isn't, so there is another Adam Angst, but I feel a little sorry for him because I was there first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than he is. <laughs> oh, well, poor guy. Okay. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on. I really, really enjoyed it. You're very welcome. I had a great time too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeet at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other Nocilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeet.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.